Hello and welcome to this second message on our series God Calling People by Their Name. In our first session we have seen Saul of Tarsus, who was the greatest of all sinners, and we have seen how the grace of God has made him the greatest servant of the New Testament after the Lord Jesus Christ. With Saul of Tarsus, we see the beginning of the Christian life. He had a personal encounter with the glorified Christ, and he asked two important questions. The first question was, who are you, Lord? He wanted to grow in the knowledge of his Lord. And the second question was, what shall I do, Lord? He wanted to do the will of God. Two very important points. Today, we are going to look at Simon Peter. He also was called twice by his name, from the Lord Jesus. And we are going to look at Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you to sift you as wheat. But I have besought for you that your faith fail not. And you, when once you have been restored, confirm your brethren. Now, with the story of Simon Peter, we learn a very important lesson. The lesson is that we need to depend upon the Lord in all things. Simon Peter, he had one big problem, and that was he had self-confidence. He trusted in his own strength, and that's why he failed. We need to realize that we have no strength in ourselves. There's a very important truth for the Christian we have two natures. We have a new life, a divine nature that is given by God, and we still have our old nature that is our sinful flesh. And the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. This is something that we need to learn, and sometimes we have to learn it by experience, as it was the case with Simon Peter. But what is wonderful is that the Lord Jesus, he knew everything that would happen in advance. And what he says to Simon Peter is, Simon, Satan will come and he will try to make you fall. He will try to make you sin. But I have prayed for you. That's such a wonderful word. The Lord Jesus, already before Simon Peter failed, had prayed that his faith would not fail. You see, we are kept by the power of God. We are kept by faith. That's what Simon Peter himself, he writes in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And the Lord Jesus has a wonderful ministry for us when we have sinned, when we have failed. He is our advocate with the Father. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, we read, When we have sinned, then we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And his desire is to restore us to fellowship with God. And he has done this with Simon Peter. There are three steps, we may say, how the Lord Jesus has restored Simon Peter. First of all, he had prayed for him even before Simon Peter failed. Secondly, we read in Luke chapter 22, in verse 61, and the Lord, turning round, looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said to him, Before the cock crow, you will deny me thrice. And Peter, going forth outside, wept bitterly. Directly after Simon had denied his Lord three times, the Lord Jesus looked at him. But it was not a look of reproach, it was a look full of meekness. The Lord communicated to Simon, Simon, I still love you with the same love that I loved you 10 minutes ago before you denied me. My love doesn't change for you. And Simon Peter, when he saw the look of the Lord Jesus, it broke his heart. And that was the beginning of his restoration. He wept bitterly. And thirdly, we read in Luke chapter 24 that on the resurrection day, when the Lord Jesus rose again from the dead, First of all, he met Mary Magdalene, but then after this, we read in verse 34, the Lord is indeed risen and has appeared to Simon. You see, the Lord had this desire, first of all, to reveal himself, to show himself alive to Simon Peter, because Simon, he was so despaired, he had denied his Lord three times, and after this, the Lord Jesus died. 
And now Simon was in a great despair. And the Lord Jesus wanted to show him, I am alive. And he had an eye-to-eye conversation with Simon Peter. That was his private restoration, we may say. In John chapter 21, we read about his public restoration, how the Lord Jesus publicly restored Simon Peter before the others. And he gave him a new ministry. And that's so encouraging for us that even though we fail, when we repent sincerely and when we confess our sins, God is righteous and faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when we do that, God is even willing to use us again in ministry. And with Simon Peter, we see that in John chapter 21, the Lord Jesus even extended his ministry. Before, he was a fisher of man. He was there to preach the gospel and to, to catch people for the Lord Jesus. But in John chapter 21, the Lord Jesus gives him even a new ministry and says, I want you to take care of my sheep. And the sheep, these are the believers, they are the most precious things of the Lord Jesus that the Lord Jesus has here in this world. And the Lord Jesus entrusted them to the care of Simon Peter. What a grace, what a wonderful Savior we have. This is a great encouragement for us. And we read that Simon Peter, he became a real shepherd. He wrote the first epistle of Peter. And there in this epistle in 1 Peter chapter 5, Simon is sharing his, I have that impression, he is sharing his own experience. And he tells the believers, you know, I did it wrong. Don't do the same mistake as I did. And there in 1 Peter chapter 5, he says in verse 6, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You see, Peter, he wasn't humble. He trusted in himself. No, he says, humble yourself. How can we do that? Having cast all your care upon him, for he cares about you. By casting our care in prayer upon God, we humble ourselves before him. We realize, I cannot do it in my own strength. I need your help. And that's what Simon Peter tells the believers. He continues and says in verse 8, Be vigilant, watch your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now that's exactly what happened to Simon Peter. He had failed to watch and to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the Lord Jesus told him and James and John, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. They had failed. They had fallen asleep. And that's why finally Simon Peter, he failed and denied his Lord thrice, three times. But here he says, be vigilant, watch, don't do the same mistake as I did. But you see, Simon Peter, he speaks about the God of all grace in verse 10. And only Simon is allowed to speak about the God of all grace because he had experienced the restoring grace of God. And when we repent sincerely, and we confess our sins and our failures before God, God will restore us and he can again use us in ministry. So let us remember these important lessons. We need to learn that after our conversion, we depend upon God for everything. If we want to serve the Lord, we need to depend upon him and to trust him. Secondly, we need to realize that we have two natures. We have a new nature, the divine life given by God, and we still have our old nature, our sinful flesh. And we should not trust in ourselves or in our sinful flesh, otherwise we will fail. And in case that we fail, we have an advocate, that is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he wants to restore us into our, into our fellowship that we have with the Father, that we may enjoy again the relationship that we have with the Father. We may really say with Simon Peter, where sin has abounded, grace has overabounded. And we have to do with the God of all grace.